Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the page. Welcome back to the build of the MR Aero Designs PC6 Pilatus Turbo Porter. Look at the freaking size of this thing. Alright guys, see me over here, miniature behind this massive plane. <laughs> um, yeah, we've got both wings on finally. The other wing I just finished today and we are uh, gluing the other wing tube in place. Same thing we did in the last video with the... Uh, the right wing. So now we're doing that on the left wing. You can see right there. So I uh, put the glue on a couple hours ago and I've just been working on the horizontal stab, the tail section, and trying to figure that out, figure out the best solution for uh, making that thing removable. So thanks for coming back to the channel. Thanks for coming back to this video series. And if this is your first time finding my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. Uh, hit the bell when you do hit the subscribe button. That way you'll get notified when I release new videos. And last thing guys, don't forget to give the video a big thumbs up. All right guys, so the next big thing that I wanna tackle here is making the horizontal stab removable. So with that in my mind, to do this properly, there needs to be a lot of reinforcement that happens. So this is the elevator section, the horizontal stab, and this piece gets glued onto it. So we're not gonna talk about the actual surface itself at this point. We're just gonna talk about how this surface interfaces with the structure of the fuselage. So basically, this piece sits in there and this is designed to be glued, right? So this sits in there, this is all supposed to be glued together. Okay, so that's all fine and dandy. So ultimately the simplest thing to do would be to glue this thing on, but that's not how we want to do it. So what I'm looking to do is I want to do two pins on the front and those two pins basically are going through here. Okay, so I want to have the pin be part of the fuselage, come out towards the back of the fuselage, and then the elevator section stab interface with those pins. So the reason I want those pins in there is it drops down our support lower into the fuselage rather than just using bolts on the top. Now I've seen other examples, people have sent me examples of four bolts up top here, which is totally fine. I think that works great. It's probably working great for people, but I think adding some pins down here will work as well too. So that's step number one. Then we've got these support pieces, FUWs, that are supposed to be glued on right here. Now these are balsa. So looking from the back of the fuselage here, what I'm gonna do is I am going to cut a piece of plywood out and the piece of plywood is going to basically fill this entire area and it's gonna have this same angle that's on this piece here. So we might have to do that in multiple pieces laminate them together and then cut them off. I'm not quite sure yet how I'm going to accomplish that. And then we're going to do that on both sides. So essentially we're going to have one solid piece going all the way across for that horizontal stab surface to sit on. It's going to have the most amount of support because we're bringing the support structure all the way out to the outside. And then we're tying this top structure into the bottom structure as well with those supports going down. Now these pieces, because we want those pins to interlock, this has to be a little bit short. So when we put the elevator in, we can drop it down and click it on that pin. So that's all the stuff that I need to figure out. And I think that system is going to work good. So when we put this elevator on, the end goal here is we slide the front of the elevator in 
engage those pins. This comes down and then we use probably four blind nuts and stuff and hardware in from the top, maybe two, maybe four, not quite sure yet. Uh, we might do three, so I might do one in the center. Not quite sure, because this is all gonna be one solid block, right? Um, that's my plan. We'll see how it works. I think it's gonna work great. It's just a matter of doing all the bits and pieces. As I go through this, um, I will show you all the steps of of what I do with this tail. I have a sneaking suspicion this is probably gonna be the entirety of this video, but we'll see how long it goes for and we'll see how much progress we can make. But thanks guys for tuning in. I will uh, get back to you when I've got some updates. All right guys, and then the changes we're gonna do here. So this piece gets glued on like that. Um, so the changes we would do here is put some hardwood blocks in the openings there. So those are glued to this piece, right? Um, then we need to change the sheeting on the bottom of the plane because if we're bolting this down, you don't want balsa there, you want it to be plywood. So basically we would change this entire area or we are going to change this entire area to be 3.30 seconds uh, ply instead of the balsa. And that gives us a nice solid structure to fasten the stab to the fuselage with. All right, so tip time again, guys. If you do make any molds of anything, uh, leave the remaining silicone from your molds in the bottom of your cup or your mixing container. And that makes a wonderful high sol slash epoxy mixing plate. So you can use all of the material on this silicone plate. And when you're done with it, let it harden or cure overnight or however long it's gonna take. And it just peels right off the next day because nothing sticks to silicone except silicone. All right guys, so the last thing we wanna to do tonight is get the engine mount mounted to the F1 former, which is the last former in the fuselage. So the reason we want to do this is because the engine mount is fixed like that, but the actual angle and everything happens in the former itself. Okay, so that gets positioned in the fuselage. So I want to get this on there so it's uh, it's curing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be very stringent, stingent, stingy with the amount of glue I use because what we're going to do afterwards is we're going to go back and we are going to put some reinforcements with some fiberglass just in all these corners and stuff. So um, essentially right now we just want to get this stuck together with high saw and let it set overnight. And of course to complete this task we need trusty bent screwdriver. Thank you trusty bent screwdriver. As usual you are the most useful tool in my toolbox. All right, so all the sides have been taken care of. Now we could do the back side, but I'm not gonna worry about that because we can take care of all that when it's installed in the fuselage and I don't want anything to interfere with getting it installed. So that's been all taken care of. So we'll just set this aside and tomorrow it will be all cured and put in place and we'll be good to go. Good morning guys. So we've got the engine mount all glued on. Now this, the F1 former is still loose. I just put it in place, uh, but that's all nice and solid now. Uh, glued these pieces of hardwood in. Now these weren't installed previously, so I just installed them. And we did get quite lucky with that first wing hole right there. Uh, it is in perfect spot. So. It's like I knew what I was doing, but I didn't actually know what I was doing. So anyways, we won't be able to put the uh, the disc that I did in the last video right there, but that's okay, it doesn't need it, and uh, the hardwood's all installed. So one thing that I've noticed that is missing from the kit is these FU6 pieces that are supposed to get installed right here behind the wing tube. Crap happens. Um, obviously the, the owner of this kit, when he was building the fuselage, missed those pieces, whatever. Stuff happens when you're putting aircraft together. We're just gonna deal with this. So here's my thought on how we're gonna get those installed. So this is essentially how the piece is gonna go in place, like this. 
can see the interlocking tabs and everything there. So what we're going to do is we are going to cut these pieces right like that. So then on the outboard piece, we've got one, two, uh, I guess three if you want to call it that. So, but two or three interlocking tabs, which we should be able to get it in place. And then on the middle ones, we're going to have one, two interlocking tabs. We're going to glue all that together with uh, some strong glue and we should be just fine. And then once this is all done, uh, the wing tube is going to also get glued to all those uh, pieces of wood that get installed. So should be absolutely not an issue. Obviously, it would be nice if that was installed previously, but whatever. Okay, another tip time for you guys. Mini digital protractors. These things are phenomenal. Uh, if you're in Canada, we get these at Princess Auto. You can get them a lot of different places, but Princess Auto is fairly inexpensive. If you're in the U.S., a place like Harbor Freight has them. So the nice thing about the these things is they are completely adjustable, resettable, all that kind of stuff. So right now, I've got it leveled to my table, so we're 0.1 degrees off of level, which is, is almost nothing. So anyways, we're going to use that as our reference point. And then when we take this and put it on somewhere like the rear fuselage here. Now I've already been playing with this, so I know what I need to do. Hopefully this shows up on the screen. So we are 0.8 out and the angle is, is this way. So what we need to do is as we're putting this rear tail together, we need to take the rear tail and twist it just a little bit. So not much. So as we're doing these reinforcements, we're gonna make sure we're twisting this and gluing things in place to try and get this tail as level as possible because right now the fuselage is level on the level build table. And as we get closer towards the rear of the aircraft, we want this to be obviously level as well too. We don't want the wings to be level and the tail to be cockeyed like that. Not a huge amount. We've only got to go, you know, less than one degree, but we want to make this as perfect as possible. And these things are also magnetic as well too, or at least this one is, so it sticks to things nicely. So the, the very first thing I'm going to try doing here is I'm going to glue these pieces as they come through here. So I'm going to over twist this. And if you watch right here, okay, you can see the wood butting up against the spacer. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is that. But then when I start adding all the reinforcements, I'm going to make sure that I, I modify or twist the fuselage to try and get rid of, get that to be as close to zero as possible. Alrighty guys, we got the woodwork all installed. So the easiest thing to do was cut it like I showed you. Um, fortunately, these balsa pieces here, these quarter by quarters, I was able to pop out. So came loose from the front here and here, and that gave us enough room to slip everything in. So this has all been glued in place. And then what I did was install the wing tube and use Gorilla Glue to glue that in place. We'll give it another spray down with some rubbing alcohol and water. And that is all curing nicely. So not a, a terribly difficult fix, but it is all fixed and we are good to go. All right, so next thing we're working on here is I was playing around with this and we need to cut, or I've already cut, but this used to have the same, this used to have the same profile on this side as it did on this side. So what I did was took a straight edge and drew a line like this, and then cut that off with my saw and grinder. So basically the reason we need to do that angle is just to provide enough clearance to get this elevator out. So we have to come back, if you imagine with the elevator, tilt it up, and we still have to be able to clear the rudder that's overhanging this entire area. So what we're also gonna have to do is we're gonna have to go straight across like this and chop that off. So what I've done, this is another little tip for you. Before you start messing with things like this, take a trace of it. So if you screw this one up, 
you have something to work with later on. So if we screw this up, all we have to do is cut this out and we've got a replacement. So I'm going to, next thing I'm gonna do is cut this off right across the bottom like that. And that's gonna allow us enough room to be able to take everything out comfortably. All right, so next step, we need to get our plywood piece installed on our horizontal stab. So what I've done obviously is removed the balsa that was in this area. I cut out a piece that's perfectly sized for this and it's uh, out of 332nd plywood. So it's exactly the same thickness as the sheeting that's on the uh, surface. And now what I've done is I have marked out the channels for the ribs and we need to get rid of these channels. So I'm just gonna use my Dremel and get rid of these, um, this material here and hopefully we can get this to be a really, really good fit on there and clamp it down and get that glued. All right guys, so this has been glued, the plate here. I started off with the front section, glued that down, let it set, then clamp the back section and let that set. So this is, I mean the plywood doesn't have probably the same kind of angle that the balsa does, but it should be really, really, really stinking close. I mean, there's the balsa is a little bit proud in this section and it's pretty much flush at the back here. So, but uh, regardless, we have to deal with whatever the outcome of this is. So we do have a bit of an angle on that plywood, but uh, we're gonna deal with that. So that's drying. Now, one thing that I didn't really think about when I was planning this out, um, I had talked about doing this as an entire solid piece and that will not work. Now the reason that won't work is because we have these interlocking tabs on the horizontal stab. So what are we gonna do about that? Well, first thing we're gonna do is, so not ready to glue this piece in yet, but we're gonna reinforce the front section with these strips of 332nd ply coming all the way down to the bottom here. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. And then we've got secondary strips, which are a little bit wider I can't remember the material I'm using here, but it's a really, really tight fit in there. So we're gonna do the same thing in this slot, same thing in that slot. And then this isn't gonna stick up as much, but it's, then we're gonna grind this down to follow the, the rib profile. But what that's gonna do is that's gonna join the top and the bottom sections all nicely together. Now I did mock this up a little bit with putting all these pieces in already to make sure they fit. And even without glue, this becomes a lot more stable with that front support. So that's what we're gonna do on the front, get that all glued in place. And then we've gotta leave enough space for this piece to come in and out. And then we have to leave enough space for the interlocking ribs of the horizontal stabs. All right guys, so there is our elevator or horizontal stab put in place. So we are really, really well positioned right now. Show you the bottom section there where it meets up with the contact surface. Now, one of the things is all the angles and stuff are fine. You know, you can do measurements and all that kind of stuff, but also use your eyes too, right? So this is gonna be hard because of the background, but if you look at the wing tube, as I bring this down, okay, you're doing the same thing with your head. So as you bring your head down, visually that leading edge of the elevator should match up with the wing tube because the wing tube is where it is. It's level in the fuselage and we need to match the elevator to the wing tube. So that's what I've done here. Um, obviously our positioning, nothing's bolted down. This is just set in place. I just wanted to see where it sits comfortably in its natural position and happy with that. All right, bent screwdriver, I need your help. All right, guys, so I'll run through a little bit of what I did here, just so you can um, get an idea of how I did this. So I'll also throw pictures up as I have them, but basically, so we put the ply on the bottom of the horizontal stab, which you've already seen, um, installed this ply here on both sides. That stretches all the way to the front here installed ply on the front that's all glued to the interlocking piece on the front here that interlocks into the actual fuse 
Then we've got another piece that goes across the bottom and this is the same height as this and that actually touches this wood dowel. So that goes on both sides. And then the last thing we did was fill in this section with layers of ply all the way down to the bottom. And the reason for that is we're gonna do this setup with one bolt. And you may think that's crazy. Um, it's not crazy and I'll tell you why. So with that one bolt in place here, that's gonna be plenty. And the reason that's gonna be plenty is the dowel work we're gonna do. So the dowel that I put in here, why did I put that dowel in there? Just to spread the load out over everything. So, you know, this one bolt here, the pieces that go down into the fuselage, this front piece, really that's all connected now. And it just spreads the load out into this entire area. And I think it's just a good way to do it. This is a, a poplar dowel, you know, weighs almost nothing. So we're not really adding a ton of weight in here. And of course the um, Gorilla Glue, yes, it looks ugly, but it's the reason I used it is it expands around the, the cracks like we've already talked about. So we pull this off like that. And this is what the underside looks like. So these pencil marks are here just so I had an idea where those things would interlock. And we put some quarter inch ply, uh, half inch ply I think is what this is, on the back side. And the reason I put such a big piece on the back side is now we've got this piece in contact with this piece here. And when we drill our dowel through here, that's all gonna be supported by this entire area, right? So really what's happening here is we're making this as rigid as possible. So back here, we're still loose if I twist it, but most of our supporting force is gonna be done with these dowels. So our bolt coming through the back is gonna be in this area. Yes, that prevents the, the horizontal stab from moving this way, sucks it down, but really our actual stability is in those pins that are going through this half inch ply right here and interlocking with our surface. So the reason I went this way is because if you do four bolts or three bolts just through the top and that's it, what you're relying on is you're relying on the stability of this structure here to support everything. And that's probably fine. It's going to work good. We're still going to fill this in as well. So we're actually going to put plywood in this area and that's going to completely stiffen up this entire area. But when you think about this from the back portion, I mean, if you've got two dowels that line this all up or pins and they're holding any side to side force like that, it's just a great way to do it in my mind. So that's why we went that way. And I think it's a good way to do it. I might add another layer of ply on this section. Uh, I might not, depends on, on how I feel it. Uh, it's gonna work. So I also beveled this ply in the back here to match up with the bevel on the rest of the balsa. So that's kind of where we're at, guys. I think that is uh, pretty much covered everything that I've done so far. And I think the next thing, next big thing for me to do is going to be put the dowels in and then with those pins or dowels in, then I can see how much space we have with putting the ply support on both sides. So this entire back section right here is gonna get filled in and all glued together. So that's gonna help make things more rigid. So there's lots that still needs to be done, but uh, when this is all finished, it's gonna be a very, very rigid setup. And the reason we have to fill all this in is we're putting the blind nut through the bottom and we're gonna be drilling through this area to install the blind nut. All right, guys, I got my pins installed and that worked out just beautifully. So this thing I won't show you right now, but um, so this is the drill contraption that I used. So I just needed extenders so I could 
get in like this and not have my drill interfere with the fuselage. And our angle is zero. If we look along the horizontal surface, it matches the wing tube perfectly. And the last thing here is side to side movement. All it's doing is it's twisting the entire fuselage. So there is zero movement there in the actual surface. It is incredibly rigid. That worked out perfect. So that single bolt that we're gonna put through the back there is gonna be awesome. All right guys, so the next thing we have to work on is the support in the back section here for the bolt. So the other thing we have to keep in mind is the twisting of the elevator like this. So right now with this in its position it's sitting in, if you measure from the leading edge of the horizontal stab to the back of the wing tube, uh, we've got about three quarters of an inch of difference. Now I've done a bit of measuring and calculating and if you look at that side right there we've got a bit of a gap which is okay. So basically when I twist the elevator and bring it to be flush with that piece of ply, what happens is everything straightens out. So I put my straight edge there on the elevator, you can see that we're not straight. So again, if I twist the elevator like this, that will, that angle there will straighten out. And then our measurement straightens out as well too. So, so that's all gonna be taken care of when I do that final bolt the fixing bolt in the rear end here. We're not gonna worry about the twisting right now because we've got play in the system to make up that difference. So the next big step for us here is to do all the structural support in the rear. And once that's done and cured, then we'll be able to do the bolt and get our position of our elevator nice and square to the airframe. So next step, reinforcing this back section. All right guys, so our support pieces back here are all mocked up. So obviously we're just following the curvature of everything. Now we do need to stay back far enough to allow the actual horizontal stab to engage and to be able to move it backwards here. So you can kind of see my rough line there in pencil. So we're pretty close to that, but we also need to keep enough material here to allow a bolt to go through with a blind nut. So that's the reason for all that. So I'm gonna high saw this all in place. The other thing I'm gonna do is high saw this piece across the bottom to tie everything together and give us a nice solid area on the bottom here to put our blind nut in so we can have a nice, uh, nice contact surface. So I'm gonna glue all this together and then basically we need to let this sit till tomorrow to cure before we can do anything with it. All right, guys, we are almost ready to bolt the horizontal stab onto the fuselage. Last thing we have to do before we get this step done is just sand down these areas here and just confirm that they're nice and flat. Uh, the primary one is this. So I'm just gonna use my Dremel and sand this area down. This area here, I'm gonna use a Dremel and then just a file in this area just to make sure that all the glue is nice and flat. So I'm gonna get that done and then we're gonna line up the elevator and get that all set up and run that blind nut and bolt through the fuselage and get this step done. All right guys, just to review this again, so we've used the digital protractor. Table is level. Put the protractor on the wing tube. Wing tube is level, fuselage is level. Put the protractor on the surface. Surface is level relative to the table and the wing tube. When you look down the horizontal stab, it's level to the wing tube. The only thing we had to adjust was this angle. So what I've done is obviously hooked up um, a rope to the back, to the front, and then just used my clamp. Didn't take a lot of force at all. You can see the clamp is still loose to lightly pull that elevator forward. Now we've overcompensated by about an eighth of an inch, but we're I'm, I'm happy with where we're sitting right now. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill this, install the bolt and the blind nut, and we will check and see how we're sitting. All right, guys, there she is, all bolted on. So I didn't have a long enough Allen key bolt, but I have a Phillips head one that I used and there was the blind nut on the bottom there. 
So very, very happy with the results. Everything worked out good. Now, this connection is extremely solid. So that flex, as I've talked about previously in this video, is all in the fuselage. Now that's all gonna get stiffened up when this is all sheeted and the, the vertical stab is glued in place and everything. So there's a lot of stuff that's gonna happen there to help stiffen this up as well. But any of that movement is all in the fuselage. There's zero movement in the actual connection point there. So I'm extremely happy with the way that that all worked out. So I'm still gonna do a couple reinforcements here. So I'm just gonna also put a piece that goes straight down uh, and connects the top and the bottom. So that's one thing I'm gonna do just to make sure that the top and the bottom are connected. So we're just gonna put a piece of ply going from the top to the bottom. And I might do a little bit of extra connection work in this area because when you twist this side to side, if you look right here, you can see a bit of movement there. Again, we're kind of over engineering this kit when maybe we don't need to, but I'm a fan of over engineering because again, when this is all glued in place, that's gonna stiffen all that up. So that is everything guys for this episode. I'm not gonna do the rest of the reinforcements in this episode because I know it's gonna be quite long at this point, but uh, we got a lot achieved in this episode. We got the uh, the horizontal stab, all removable, all figured out, and uh, making some good progress. So thanks guys for tuning into the MR Aero Design Pilatus PC6 Turbo Porter build series. I hope you guys are enjoying this build series so far. Not quite sure what I'm gonna work on in the next episode, but stay tuned and uh, don't forget to check the next episode out. So if you guys haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button, uh, give the video a thumbs up. When you do hit that subscribe button, hit the bell so you get notified when I release new videos. Last thing guys is I started a website. It dropped last weekend and it's called the lighter side of rc.com. There's a link down below in the description. Check it out. It's in its kind of adolescent stages right now. It kind of describes how I got into this hobby and a bit about me. But there's some exciting things in the works and it's going to be fun. So thanks guys for tuning in. We will see you in the next episode.